the little books that we have, you know, we're almost out. Oh, okay. But yeah. <coughs> Never mind. And I've taken those little dollar journals from the, the dollar store and did the same thing. One, slip a couple pages, two, <laughs> and then January, February, March, April, May. Sure, make a journal for yourself. This is just a handout so that you can see visually what will help you. And because guess what? You may have to make five or six page day ones because, oh my gosh, 10, 20,000 things happened today that were wonderful and I wanted to write about them. Whatever. That's the goal. But yeah, whatever works for you. There's no wrong way to do this process. So let's do a guided meditation, shall we? Let's do, uh, since Phil and I saw those two eagles, let's do a two eagle guided meditation. <coughs> So allow yourself just to take a deep breath in and exhale. And just be with that breathing for a moment. And now exhale and bring in a fresh breath of air. And intentionally draw in again. Breathe it in. Breathe in life. Breathe in joy. Breathe in appreciation. Acknowledge yourself for being here. And with that, notice the feelings of gratitude that begin to flow through your heart space and through your mind and through your whole body. That gratitude energy is extremely healing to the physical form. And now notice in your physical body, if there's any tension or stress somewhere, a lot of times we carry energy in our shoulders. You might want to roll your shoulders just to release that, clear that out. I don't need to carry that anymore. And breathe in again. Fresh, clear energy. And now allow yourself to find your way to a pathway. Notice it's a long and winding pathway. And notice ahead of you, there are meadows and bridges and mountains. And there's maybe escarpments on the mountains. Escarpment is a rock outcropping. And notice that between the mountains is a valley. Maybe there's a river running through it. Just notice this is all, all ahead. And now turn around and look at the journey behind you. And the pathway behind you runs through farmland and fields, and valleys, and orchards. And you feel a gentle breeze on your face as you stand here on your path. You can take a moment. You don't have to always be moving forward. You can just be still for a moment. Noticing the road ahead, noticing the road behind. And notice next to this road, next to this pathway, is an old tree that's kind of died, and there's just branches here, and there are two eagles perched in this dead tree. And we can be grateful for this tree that lived its life, and its structure is still standing and is home now to these beautiful, elegant eagles. And one eagle takes flight and flies towards your future path. And the other eagle takes flight and flies towards your past. 
and notice them. The outstretched wings, the grace, and the power that they command. And in just a short period of time, these eagles will return. The eagle from the future will bring back something, some symbolic object that will assist you in your journey from this point forward, that will help you, guide you, protect you. And in just a few moments, the eagle from your past that has followed the trail of your past is going to bring back some lesson that you learned, some beautiful perspective that you may have forgotten and will bring it back in symbolic form for you, even if you don't understand the symbolism of that. So the eagle from the future comes back and deposits something in front of you and then goes and perches on the tree. And notice, notice that. What is that? What is that symbolic object? If you cannot identify it in this moment, know that within three days, something symbolic will happen for you, and you will know that it came from this eagle spirit. If you do see your symbolic object, receive that with great gratitude. Feel the gratitude flowing through your body. Even if you don't understand what it is, or what it means, or what its symbolism signifies for you, receive it with deep gratitude. Let that gratitude flow through every cell of your body, bringing healing energy and this expanded awareness. And now you turn and you look in the eagle from your past that has flown back through your timeline is now bringing you back something that is symbolic that will support you on your journey forward. And we'll deposit it at your feet and then go perch on the tree. And again, notice what this is. Receive it with deep gratitude. And know that whether you perceive this in the moment or not, within the next three days, you will have a significant experience and you will know that it came from this eagle spirit. Either way, receive this with deep gratitude now, in this moment, knowing that good things and beautiful things are in your life. And from that space of gratitude, allow yourself to now leave a gift here. Maybe put it at the base of the tree. Perhaps it's something for the birds to eat, Perhaps it's a, a, a significant uh, symbolic object for you that it signifies you, who you are, acknowledging this moment as powerful and as precious. Perhaps it's just a marking on the tree, acknowledging that you were here, <coughs> carving your name in the tree. And you know that your journey will expand forward from here. And that there are things for you to experience, things for you to enjoy from here. And you're equipped. You've got this. And you've got the spirit of the eagle to go with you. So with that, allow yourself to step from this symbolic place, this energetic symbolic place, back into this time and space back into your physical form, back into the here and now. Take a deep breath in and exhale. Stretch a bit, wiggle fingers, wiggle toes. Welcome back. <coughs> and Mr. Phil, if you would join me up front, please, sir. I'm gonna let you sit with that and then we'll come back to that in a moment.
Communion is a sacred ceremony. Whether you're a follower of the way or not, doesn't matter. This is your opportunity to symbolically taste spiritual life, spiritual connection. We just did in our guided meditation. This is another symbolic form of that. Join us in prayer, please. Loving spirit of light, as we partake of this, help us to acknowledge our journey, our spiritual path. Help us to step forward with expanded awareness and a bright hope. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we have animal crackers if you prefer that. Um, Unleavened bread if you like the tradition of that. And then the cup is gluten free. I forgot to tell you about that. As that continues around, would you join us in prayer again, please? Loving Spirit of Light, as we drink this in, help us to drink in life. Help us to drink it in with enthusiasm, with joy, and with understanding that there is so much good in every day. Walk with us in all things. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Not my job, man. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> and we all know what that means, right? Yeah. Yeah. How many people in AA know? <laughs> Kindle. Nobody ever knows what to say. Yeah, I saw that coming. I don't know how I, do, I was able to do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the acoustic. No. Uh, we give in everything we do. Uh, time, energy, spirit, compassion. And giving is what kind of makes life roll around. So as you give today, just let that just be a part of it part of what makes up your life and keeps things rolling around. Thank you, sir. Turn this one back on. Okay. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments about their guided meditation? <laughs> uh, yeah, a few. Could I get somebody to run the microphone so I don't make it scream? If you push that bottom button, that light will go green. So let me get out of the conservative Christian spot over there. <laughs> Phil? OK, try it again. So the future uh, brought me a mouse. A mouse. And the past brought me a clarinet, and I left a white feather. Okay, so do you play the clarinet? I used to. You used to, okay. So this is about, okay, I'm being, I'm being led, I need to do the mouse first. 
So the mouse is about the next right thing. It doesn't have to be big. The mouse is just a little thing. And it just keeps its nose down and just does what it needs to do. So just do the next right thing and don't worry about what's out there, how far it is, or what, what's the next huge thing, or, or the next challenge that's coming your way. Just do, right, do the next thing. And that's enough. You're enough. You're doing enough. It is enough. Does that make sense? <clears throat> so the clarinet. Clarinet is about two things I'm hearing for you. Oh, hearing. Um, one is the fact that it's music, bringing music back into your world. But this is like your sacred soul song. You know, we all have a sacred um, t tone, a sacred song that our soul emanates to. And this is allowing you, it's brought this back to you. So whatever trauma was back there, this has reclaimed this for you and brought it present time. So that this is bringing that soul song, the purity of the soul song back to you and, and beyond any trauma that could have happened to you. The other aspect of this is muscle memory. You know, when you're learning the clarinet, it's hard to remember which finger goes where. But once you get it, then the muscles know what to do. So this is bringing back to your awareness that you really do know what to do. You re you've got this. You've got this more than you think you do. So trust that you do. And this is bringing back that sacred soul song to you and giving you the ability to step forward just a little at a time and knowing that it's enough. Does that feel right to you? Oh, the white feather. Um, the white feather is uh, symbolic of spiritual presence. So you're not alone. And when you feel like you don't know what you're doing, that's OK. You have that connection. That prayer will get you right there. And you'll have the assistance necessary to move forward. OK? Yes. Thanks. Um, from the past, it was the first time the ego brought me was a mud ball. And then from the future, the ego brought me um, like evergreen tree like a Christmas tree branch a little one okay and then when you said I don't know how I got it the ego from the past came again and brought me a golden coin okay mm -hmm. super and then I had a white flower I mean yeah. a white feather you also that. had a white feather so ditto on the white feather you know wherever you're at whatever you're doing you have the power of prayer to reconnect you at any moment even when we feel ourselves slipping into that negative bi negativity bias prayer is the fastest journey back and you have that, that spiritual presence that's there for you right here. And you don't have to go somewhere. You don't have to sit on a mountain and pray. You can just right here. It's right here right now. So the ego from the past brought you a mud ball first. Okay, how many people played in the mud when you were a kid? Oh, I loved that. I loved mud. Nowadays, I don't want to get dirty. But, you know, I liked mud back then. So this is that childlike playfulness. Play. You get to play. It gets to be fun. And life is messy. It's okay. Have fun. Okay? Um, the other thing the, the eagle from the past brought you back was a gold coin. Gold coins have to do with value. This is your value. You've forgotten how valuable you are. And this is to remind you. Again, we all we think of, we tend to only think of the things that we screwed up in the past. But this eagle is bringing back to you this childlike value that transcends any mistakes you may have perceived that you made. I don't really be <coughs> believe in mistakes. I believe in lessons learned. <laughs> uh, and then again, the white feather for um, that spiritual connection that's right here, right now. And you have more on that, Dan? Microphone for Dan. The mud ball. That's the grounding in the earth. And the evergreen little oh, sprig that you had, <clears throat> if you plant that and you ground yourself in the earth, your growth will always be evergreen. Oh, I love it. Thank you. That's why I forgot it. It wasn't mine to give. <laughs> Who else? There's one up here, too, when we're, we'll work our way around. <laughs> OK, so um, it was very, uh, anyway. the. Um, Eagle from the... So you uh, like that, is what I'm hearing you say? 
<laughs> yeah. So the eagle from the future brought me, uh, I, I forget what it's called, but it's the medical symbol, the staff. Oh, yeah. With the snake mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm, yeah. Uh, wait. Mm. Yes. And it was huge. It, I don't know how it carried it, but it brought it, it brought it there. And the one from the past brought me something that I lost a long time ago. It was a little teeny tiny gold cross that was given to me in church when I was only maybe two or three years old. And um, then what I left was the word of understanding between the two. Awesome. I, I felt like there was some sort of, I need the understanding between the two symbols. Got or something like that. So the uh, caduceus is about healing. Mm -hmm. So there may be healing work for you to do. Okay. Um, I'll just say as an aside, I'm hoping to do, or I'm not hoping, I'm planning to do some healing practices okay. uh, for free and bring us all in and do some healing stuff. So okay. there's more stuff coming here at the Divine Fellowship just for for utilizing those healing abilities because I think there's a lot of us that have them but just not sure quite how to use them or don't want to go through a whole big long series of training and but want to get to working with these okay tools um, so that's part of that um, and then the little teeny tiny gold cross oh that's your oh, that's that sacred childlike mm -hmm. acceptance of faith mm -hmm. You know, um, our faith gets kind of distorted because we put faith in the wrong things. Mm -hmm. We put our faith in people, and people let us down. We put our faith in religion, and religi religion lets us down. This is bringing you back to the faith in the one. Okay. Does that make sense? And yes. what did you leave? The understanding. There was understanding. An understanding. Okay. With that faith now, you'll be an even better healer. Okay. Now that makes sense, yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Is this fun or what? I don't know about you. I just love this stuff. I don't know. Some people don't care for that, but I do. Okay. All right, mine was um, from the future. Uh -huh. The eagle, it actually came and landed on a branch, and it had a, like a gold pendant. It was shaped like a bowl, but it had been hammered mm -hmm. into that. So you could see the little hammer marks. Into um, a bowl? Into like a bowl-shaped pendant. Uh -huh. It was concave and really thin. Uh -huh. um, the eagle from the past um, was way high up, and I had to catch what it dropped. Mm -hmm. And it was another pendant, but this was made of polished bone, and it had hatch marks all the way around the edge. Ooh. And I left, um, it was just like four or five uh, very light purple flux flower petals. I just opened my hand and they came out. Mm-hmm. Because they're they're already there. Mm -hmm. They were purple, right? Very light purple. Very light. Yeah. Um. I really like phlox because when it blooms, it just blooms, mm -hmm. and it's just this cascade of colors. They like to they like to fall over rocks and and things. So there's just this flow of color, um, and I think this is letting your by giving that back or leaving that here, this is an acknowledgement to you that it's your time to just flow, letting that divine energy flow through you and, and being of service in that way. Uh, so the future brought you this hammered pendant that was a, a bowl. Anything that's a pendant is something that's going around your neck. And what, and did it like hit at your heart space or hit lower? Right in here? Right smack in the middle. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so this, is, this is right in, in your heart space area. And this is so your heart now has more capacity to hold more joy. So more joy than you can hold in your heart right now is coming your way. And so you've been expanded. Your heart is being expanded to be able to receive that. And the hammered metal is about um, intention. You know, it doesn't happen by accident. So you're, you're expanding your heart space intentionally to receive even more joy than you have in the past. Uh, the bone with the, the markings on that, I have no clue. Do you, Dan does. Team Dan and Jan. The pendant being concave, in the Native American tradition, if you wear it, 
with the concave side out, that protects you from what comes your way. If you turn it around, it also does the same thing. It, re, it uh, reflects things away. The bone, that's an eagle bone whistle. The dancers in the Sundance called the spirits to them with that whistle. You now have a method by which to call the spirits directly to you for safety and protection. Way cool. Anybody else in this room get goosebumps? <laughs> awesome. Wonderful. Thank you. There's more over here. Up here? Where are we? Oh, okay. I can't. The lights are right smack in my eyes here. Okay. The eagle from the future came by with, um, looked like a lantern, mm -hmm. but the lantern was very fragile. And the lantern came down and then rested in, inside of me. Oh, wonderful. OK. And then the, the one from the past brought me a pink stone. Mm -hmm. And then for some reason in my pocket, I had some corn that I planted, some corn. Cool. So. The future one brought you the lantern that was delicate, and it went into your heart space, correct? Yes. OK. So this is about an awareness that is coming to you that has already been implanted. Uh, and the delicacy isn't that it's fragile or in any way, shape, or form less than. It's that it's precious. So this precious awareness you're being gifted with uh, a hint of it now. And more and more is going to grow from that. The, uh, the eagle from the past brought you the rose quartz. This is love. Rose quartz is all about love. So this is bringing the loving self that you are, transcending any and all trauma, bringing it present time. So that no aspect of your love has been lost. That you have it fully and completely and it is with that love that this light of enlightenment uh, can shine even brighter, take root, take hold. And you planted the corn, and this is about being uh, willing to um, share what you know. You're planting seeds, you're planting the corn, they're going to grow up. This is sacred. Uh, and, and as that grows, then not only can the uh, ravens partake of that if they want, but any, anyone can. And so that you're planting the seeds of awareness that you just received. You're already planting them so that others can be blessed by them. You're welcome. It's on. I received from the future a crystal mm -hmm. in the shape of a teardrop. Uh-huh. And then um, the past was a, a green rock with like a um, bullseye on it of white. And I've seen that rock before, but I can't remember hmm. where it was. And then I left bird seed. OK, mm -hmm. so same thing with the bird seed as, as with the corn. You're planting ideas. You're planting what you know so that others can be nourished or blessed by that. Uh, tell me again what you got from the future. A teardrop crystal. A teardrop crystal. OK, so I, I'm not sensing that this is sorrow in any way, shape, or form. But it feels to me as if you will be able to um, help others as they are going through sorrow, bringing them crystal clarity and brightness so that they can transcend any sorrow that they're experiencing. You can be that, that bright light helping people through sorrow. And what did you get from the past? The green rock. The with green rock with the bullseye on it. Let me ask about that. So green has to do with healing. Bullseye has to do with the target focus. So, um, oh, OK. So you may be feeling as if you don't really know what you want to do from here. And so this is bringing back to you that that ability to choose, that ability to set goals, set directions for yourself, um, and be able to uh, set, um, set your heart 
and your intent and move forward on that. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Wonderful. Okay. So that's coming from the past. You, you've been able to do that in the past. You can do it again. I saw, uh, from my past, I uh, saw a blanket, like a sheet that I wore as a cloak or kind of a shawl. And then from my future, it was this huge, giant, heavy, double-edged battle axe. Cool. <laughs> and then... Oh, man. <laughs> so the, the sheet uh, that you wore as a shawl, um, sheets are, are what we rest in. So this is like rest, resting in assurance that you're safe, resting in assurance that uh, you're clear and you know what you're here to do. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. So just being, being wrapped in that. Uh, so it's kind of like the truth of who you really are. And you're reclaiming the truth of who you really are that transcends any tra trauma or sorrow that you've experienced in life. Just reclaiming that. Um, and then the double-edged battle act. So um, double-edged means it can cut both ways, coming and going, back and forth. So whatever you choose to do, you can cut through any illusion that's blocking your way. This is not cutting through other people or cutting through trauma or cutting through a challenge. This is cutting through your own illusion. So you can see the truth of who you are and what you're doing in this moment, in every moment. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then I left a homemade cherry pie. Homemade cherry I'm going to your guided meditation. <laughs> so this is a labor of love. Um, you know, you taking the pits out of cherries, just, you know, that t it's time consuming. So whatever you're doing, you're doing this as a labor of love. So you're giving love into everything you put your hands to. So if you're doing it, you're doing it out of love. It's your choice to do it. So rather than begrudging, oh, I've got to go do this. No, I'm doing this. I'm going to put my whole heart into it because that's who I am. I am a full being. You're wrapping yourself in this truth of who you are. And even if it's a tedious task, doing laundry or whatever, you're going to do it with a whole heart. I love clean clothes. I get to, do, I get to have clean clothes here. Um, I'm grateful for my washer and dryer. I don't have to take them to the laundromat. You know, all of that powerful stuff that makes what you're putting your hands to worthy. If you're doing it, it's worthy of your attention. And certainly there's plenty of things we, we can do autopilot. I'm not saying every moment has to be absolutely intense. But bringing that awareness into what you're choosing to apply your, yourself to, apply your wisdom to. And it's sweet. Others will be blessed by your experience. Yes. Um, let's see. On the, the future is all. I got a um, what do you call it? A beam of light. A beam of light. Yeah. It was kind of mm -hmm. like uh, in the form of a a wand. And then the past was a blue, a light blue stone. Mm -hmm. And what I left was a. a an abundance of energy that was golden for anyone that needed it. Oh, wonderful. Okay. So cool. Um, so what did you get from the future? The beam of light. The beam of light in the form of a? Of the form of a wand. Of a wand. Okay. So this is the ability to use energy and to use it for good. So whether, again, that's a healing thing or just your intent, um, you know, you can pray for somebody and their world changes. So using the light of love for, for a blessing for yourself and others. It's a, it's a tool for you to use. It's being gifted to you freely. Make sense? And then what did you get from the past? Uh, light blue stone. Light blue stone. Light blue stones often represent uh, communication. So there may have been some failed communication in the past where you thought you were saying or you wanted to say and you couldn't. So this is bringing to you that, that ability to speak your truth clearly, with grace. So sometimes people think, well, I said my truth, but, but they say with hypocrisy, but that's not who you are. 
But this is that sweet truth, being able to speak it in a way that's clear and able to be perceived. So at some point in the past, you know, as a child, you were able to speak the truth. And it was delightful. And then, you know, we get kind of hammered by our society of what you should say and shouldn't say, and, and hey, let's not, we don't listen to that, whatever. Um, so then we hold back, and we can't speak our truth because we don't want to hurt somebody's feelings or we don't feel we have a right to speak our truth. And this is giving you back the right to speak your truth and know that you're going to speak it with grace. You're a very kind-hearted person. You couldn't be hurtful if you wanted to be. And if somebody takes offense at something you've said, then that's something that uh, is a trigger for them that they're learning. And you can be a blessing in the moment of going, this, this, is, this is the gentle truth I want you to hear. And allowing them to be where they are with that. Does that make sense to you? And Makes perfect sense. And what did you lose again? An abundance of golden energy. Abundance of golden energy. Okay, so again, this is that willingness to use the energy you've been given in a way that blesses others. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we're about out of time. If there's other questions or comments,